Hi guys, welcome to another video from Paul here at CCTV Systems UK. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Now, I've got out here for you today one of the very latest 8-channel Hike Vision AccuSense HVRs. It's the same machine I have at home, so that should tell you an awful lot about it. Fantastic machine, we sell dozens of them every month. And I've got it turned round for you today because we need to see the back panel for the next three up and coming videos. And those videos will be on the alarm inputs and the alarm outputs on these particular machines. So, um, this is the IDS 7208HUHI uh, M1 forward slash S. It's an excellent selling machine. I've got the same one at home, not just because it's got eight alarm inputs and four alarm outputs, but it's also got the latest AccuSense technology for your human and vehicle recognition and notifications, but it also accepts four IP channels, hence the reason it's called a HVR, a hybrid video recorder, because at the front of my property I have a Hype Vision um, AccuSense Colour View camera, I have a Hike Vision Auto Tracking PTZ camera and a Hike Vision doorbell. And this machine can monitor all of those, and I've still got one to spare. In essence, it's a 12 way machine. So, three videos in quick succession. Part one today will be about the alarm inputs. And part two and part three will be on the outputs. And just very quickly, I'll show you what's to come. Part two will be on these things, 12 volt beacons and sirens, things like that. And part three will be about switching 240 volt AC items. So we've got 12 volt DC and 240 AC. And those videos will be again two and three uh, respectively. Um, so today we're talking about the inputs. What can we possibly add to an alarm input to improve on such a high spec machine? Something that's as capable as it is. Can we add something to improve it? Or can we add something to, you know, just wring that little bit more out of it to get the very best that the system can offer? Well, yes, we can. We can do that. But I might surprise you by what I'm about to show you because it's such a simple piece of technology. It tends to get overlooked and forgotten. And that is a PIR sensor. Ah, uh, yes. I can hear you all laughing now with your cups of tea and coffee in your hand. But don't snigger at this one. Yes, you could argue quite successfully that this is old technology, but that gives it two advantages. Number one, they are extremely inexpensive. And number two, they're reliable. The technology was cracked years ago on these things. They are 12 volts, so they'll run on any CCTV camera power supply. And... You don't have to buy a new power supply for it. And all it takes is a couple of little pieces of Cat5 to wire it into our input. And we've got a PIR sensor ready to go and activated. You've seen these before in the office. You walk past them and you see them flash red. It sets the alarm off in your property. And what we can also use this for is, we've just shown you the uh, rotating beacons that are 12 volt DC and the white lights that are 240 volts AC. We can set them off. We can tell them to trigger when this is agitated or when it's alarmed in its alarm state. We can get it to turn one of those units on or two of them or four of them because it does actually have four outputs. So if I spin this round, you will be able to see a few of the um, connectors on the back of it. If you can't see in this light, I will try and put a uh, little picture up in the right hand corner. We have six pins. Pin one and two are for the alarm. Cold is number one and normally open or closed circuit is number two and that's represented by blue in one and green in two. This is a normally closed circuit of a PIR. There are 
uh, normally open circuit ones I certainly stock them but I've done it on purpose because the inputs on these CCTV systems are set as normally open as they are opposite to each other it gives me the perfect opportunity to show you how to make those changes in this video pin 3 and 4 are the 12 volt DC 3 being the neutral and 4 being the positive all I've done is wire a little uh, female DC 12 volt plug and we have a 12 volt DC power supply here pins 5 and 6 on this particular unit are for the tamper switch which is the switch on the back so when this is taken off its housing it actually alarms that as well we don't need it for this video but if you wanted to I suppose you could wire this 5 and 6 into alarm put number 2 I'm going to put the main alarm into number 1 so let's put that on its housing I'll get rid of my pen and let's get a little 2 mil screwdriver out green is normally open or closed circuit and blue is for the cold which is your neutral I know it's hard to see in this light so I will put a picture in the bottom right hand corner I'm going to put the green into input number one push the orange toggle and then let go so it catches it and then count across one two three four five six seven eight and I know that nine and ten there's two grounds on this I w again I will put a picture in the corner they are in there ready to go that's it as easy as that let's get the 12 volt DC I'll just wrap it behind here plug it into the male switch it on on comes the power and I hope you can see it on my hand I know the lights bright in here but that PIR is now activating it's flashing it takes about 60 seconds but I'm going to cover it up with this booklet here because I don't want it activating as I'm showing you the configuration on this HVR so we've got a normally closed PIR and we know that these inputs are normally open so let's go and adjust those straight away if you right click left click on menu configuration on the event tab we automatically land on normal events and the alarm input is toggle number four and alarm output is number five we'll be messing around with that a great deal in video number two and three when it comes to the 12 volt DC and 240 AC but today we'll click number four which is the alarm input alarm inputs one to eight there's no alarm names the alarm types are all no which is normally open none of them are enabled so let's now turn this into a normally closed PIR if you click the edit button here alarm number one I'm going to call it PIR1 and that's so there's a reference in this machine if I ever want to use it for anything and then I'm going to click on the settings turn it from non-use into input when I do so the arming schedule and the linkage action toggles both appear and I'm going to turn this normally open circuit into an NC which is a normally closed and I'm going to press apply a little screen comes up in the center of your monitor and it will say confirm new settings will take effect after reboot click yes to reboot or no to restore old settings yes so while that's rebooting let's just go through um, what we've done here because it'll take about uh, a minute for this machine to restart itself AccuSense machines take a little while they've got a lot going on in the engine room so we've got the green which is the normally open or normally closed circuit into input number one and the ground which is blue here into one of the grounds there are two we've got it into number one which is pin number nine again a little uh, picture down in the right hand corner it matters not which way you have put these it won't hurt anything there's certainly not enough voltage 
coming down these two uh, cables that we've introduced into the alarm inputs because at the end of the day all they carry is a little alarm pulse it's just a little notification and if you're worried about voltage remember that the cable comes down the back here and we're in to a single 12 volts now the reason why i mention that is because when we do do part three which is how to use a PIR in conjunction with a 240 volt light, which is AC. Um, you can obviously plug these into your outputs and get the alarm outputs to trigger when someone's in front of the PIR. And we have had quite a few emails from people who've been using these items, which are the Sanoff R2 Minis. Nothing wrong with these units, I have to say. They are fantastic. But there's a guy over in, I think it's either Bangladesh or Poland, uh, Poland, bleh, Pakistan. And he's been doing videos on these items and basically saying, add 240 to these pins here, 240 out to a light. And these two grey pins, which are the arming pins, would normally be attached to a light switch. And what he's done is he's put basically a little diagram up and showing these then going directly into the alarm outputs. So when the alarm triggers the, on here and the uh, circuit is made, 240 goes from these two pins straight down to your alarm output and blows the back of this unit up and blows your Sanoff switch as well. That is what we call the bonehead manoeuvre. And I know that people have told us that they've done exactly the same thing, but look, guys, if you're watching my videos, you should know better. Only mess around with 240 AC if you know exactly what you're doing. And some guy sat at an old desk in Bangladesh watching um, uh, those, what do we call it, movies? Uh, I can't remember what they're called now. Bollywood or whatever it is. He's not the man to be watching. So that's the reason why I've told you you can't damage it here. I'll explain it a lot more in video number three. So we're up and running. The machine has rebooted itself. If we right click again, left click menu, configuration, event and alarm input. It has now saved the name that we allocated earlier on, which is PIR1. It's now changed the alarm type to a normally closed circuit to down to seven are still in the normally open position. You can change them as the equipment requires. It is enabled, yes. So now let's talk about the arming schedule and the linkage action. Back over to the edit. Here we go. For this particular video, we'll arm it 24 hours a day, but you might want it just armed, I don't know, from six o'clock on an evening when the office closes to six o'clock in the morning. You can do that by clicking clear and take out any of these sections or click the edit button and change it down to the actual minute. For our video, 24 hours a day. What is interesting is the linkage action. And as you will find on most of our videos, we tend to click the alarm pop-up, which used to be called the full screen monitoring, the buzzer alarm, which used to be called the Audible Warning and the Notify Surveillance Center. That's the push notification through to a mobile device. So I'll bring a phone here now, and I'm going to click one, two, three, press apply. If you have your email credentials lodged inside your security system, your CCTV system, you can click send email, it will do that as well. And let's just say, for instance, we had uh, the 12 volt DC beacon in alarm output number one and the white light 240 AC into alarm output number two. Remember, no 240 volts directly into the back of this or you will blow it sky high like that uh, guy does on the videos. It would then have activated these two, bringing the beacon on and the white light. I'll show you that in video number two and three. We also have a PTZ controller and the reason for that is if you have a PTZ camera, you can set a zone up in front of your PIR, especially if it's external, so that if the alarm goes off, it will also tell the PTZ 
to go and look at the area that is com of concern in front of your PIR centre. So, that's it, we're done. Local input alarm one, we've called it PIR, it's on the input. We've changed it to normally closed circuit for our particular PIR. We've got the pop-up, the buzzer and the notify surveillance centre. That's it. Let's close this down, go to the live view, I'll make it full screen, so that the light is fading fast, it's quarter to eight in the evening. And I'll leave the seven inactive channels here so you can actually see that jump onto the full screen. All we've got to do now is remove this little notepad and give it a bit of a wave. Here we go. I'll cover it up again very quickly because I don't want it going off every two minutes. There's the notification through to my mobile phone. So we have the full screen, we have the bleep from the HVR. And if I nip into my mobile phone very quickly, we have a notification from Pipe Connect. It does say camera one, one A, which is the alarm output, one alarm. And there should be a picture of the garden location. And again, the snapshot is there just by coincidence and that's because when the alarm output which is in number one is activated it will push a picture from camera number one on the assumption that you've got the PIR and the camera looking at the same screen. You don't have to do that, it's nice just to get the notification through to your phone so you know that the PIR has been agitated. It's in a position where it's been opened in other words someone's walking in front of it let's do that once more there you go again full screen the bleep from the DVR and again one more I'll click it very quickly alarm one today at 1916 the one before sorry was 1945, sorry, 1946, so 19, uh, 1945 and 1946, and you can click any of them, and if you did have your PIR, the camera looking in the same place, if you press playback, you automatically get the playback. You can, of course, move that forwards or backwards and do whatever it is that you want with it. And that is a PIR that we thought was old technology, giving the CCTV system even more strength, more ability. And what we're doing is getting then the very most out of our system. So all I've got to do now is right click, menu, configuration, event, alarm input. I'll go to the edit and as today, is Wednesday I'm just going to press clear just so you can see the timer going Wednesday 6 while 10 apply everything's still in play all I've done is taken out this section because I don't want the notifications or the bleep from the machine or the full screen monitoring I'll come out of there go back to the live view as always and leave the other seven inactive cameras on and when I remove the but this time the PIR is still flashing, it's still firing over, but no notifications. And that is the arming schedule working the way that it's been designed to do. So, that is how we supplement a machine even as good as this, the one that I have in my own home, the one that sells the most in the UK. We supplement it with some old technology, again, inexpensive and super reliable why would you not do that the PIR again can be used in conjunction with the inputs to switch the outputs and just once more for reference video number two will be how to switch in other words activate a 12 volt um, unit such as this beacon or a siren and video number three will be about how to switch 240 AC correctly, not through one of these Sanoff switches, even though these, these can do it, 
but not through our machine unfortunately but through what we call a dual pole dual throw relay which uses 12 volts DC to switch in other words to activate 240 volts AC and I'm going to show you how to do that correctly without blowing lots of these items up and lots of CCTV systems because that is what this guy over the hill there is advocating to us on his YouTube channel what a load of scallops he's talking I can't believe he's got away with that and people are actually listening to it and blowing up their own items it's costing them a lot of money so if you've liked this video today do me a favor click the like button click the subscribe button and click the thumbs up at the end of the day the subscription is what's important because that way you can see video number two and video number three you'll get a notification on your youtube telling you that it's available and if you've liked this video with the pir on the inputs trust me you're going to love video part two and part three so all i've got to say is my usual farewell this is Paul logging off at CCTV Systems UK. Again, if you click the subscribe button, you will get to see the videos that are up and coming very soon. So, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy the upcoming videos, and they will be uploaded very soon for you. And that, my friends, is it for today. Bye-bye now.